see it. Who here is loving the fall? No. I get most hands. How many are, are you loving the fact that we have uh, these guys everywhere? Yeah, right, and, and the crisp, and the walking, and the, the sound. And it's a great, great thing, and then you have the kids all playing in the leaves. It's a wonderful thing, and you think, you know what, it's a beautiful time of the year, so we as a family are going to hunker down, pack up, and we're going to do some what? We're going to do some camping. <laughs> and so it's like a great, great fun. Now, I am not talking glamping or cabins. I am talking old school, old fashioned, grab a tent, grab the, grab the, everything you need, and do the old school camping. And camping is a ton of fun, isn't it? It is a ton of fun to get out there with nature and see the stars and the sky, see the beautiful colors. It is a blast. It is a great fun time for the family to explore nature and see that all that God has made and cook and have this, this great family memories built up. It's a fun time until it's not, right? <laughs> it, 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 it can be wonderful and great, but that, that depends on a lot of things coming in, into place, right? Uh, one of them is nature. It must be a beautiful, clear, sunny fall day, nice and crisp and warm. <clears throat> but have you ever been camping and that's not been your experience? Any of those here? Yes, I see those. And uh, you, you, you may get some rain. Maybe even some more rain. Amen. Or even some more rain. Amen. Or you might have some visitors. <laughs> and, and, and then we, we haven't even started talking about the wind issues. <laughs> and of course, this is the worst case scenario. <laughs> And looking forward to the family camping weekend. <laughs> how, how many of you had that uh, sort of picture of camp, uh, camping is going to be this blast and it turns out to be hard, hard, not so fun work? Because tent, tent camping, not glamping, not cabins, tent camping is what? It's hard because it's designed to be what? Just temporary. It's just, you set it up, you pitch it down, you put it up, and you, you maybe get some nice air mattress. No, no, the mattress is just, you, you just, it's temporary there, and because it is not a home, right? It's never designed to be your home. You don't say to yourself, man, this is so much fun, I want to do this every single night. In, in the rain, in the storms, in the wind. <laughs> and if all you had was a tent. If that was all you had for your shelter, you would be what? Without a home, you'd essentially be what? Homeless. And it's, it, it is tons of fun, right? To get out there and enjoy nature and then sleep under the stars. But if your tent was all you had, you would be without a home and it would not be a fun life, right? Scripture tells us our bodies are tents. And that's, that's kind of weird to think about, but it's true, right? Scripture tells us this, 2 Corinthians 5. For we know that the tent that is our earthly home, that is our bodies, is what? It's destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent be what? Rome. And so if, if you have ever been tent camping and it is a mess, it is rainy, it is cold, your reaction is not cheering, right? Your reaction is, oh, gosh, can, can the rain ever stop, please? And though there's, there's water creeping up from the bottom and everything I have is wet and soaking and this is miserable, we, walk, we are what we are groaning. So our bodies long, our grown longing to put on our heavenly body. If indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still this tent, we what we grown, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is who? Is God, who has given us a spirit of guarantee. <laughs> So we are always what? Of good courage. So we, when we are tent camping, and you had a miserable event, right? If 
you've been out there in the storm, if you've been out there in the rain, what do you long for? You long for your bed, amen? You long for your home. You long for walking into a place which is dry and that you can go and just sit and relax. Let's read this together. This is where it's told. We know that while we are home from the mind, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. This is a, a key, a core, such an important aspect of our faith. That, that we, we walk in this world, understand that, that this, this, is, this is temporary, right? That, that we, we, are, we are designed for something else because we are growing. Because our, our, our life is, has the same sort of quality as that tent living. It, life, life can be hard, amen? You know, I have a good friend who said, growing up is not full mix. And I concur with that. And our life here is temporary. And this is not our home. Amen? It was never designed to be our home. We are just here for a little while. Because we are what? Longing. We are groaning. We are waiting. We are, we are anxiously waiting for that time for, for our, our Lord, our Savior, to bring us home. Because where is my home? Heaven is my home. We just saw that. Paul said this. For me to live is what? Christ. Is Christ. So for me to live here on earth, yes, I will do everything because I know Christ has done everything for me and I will live for Him. I'll, I'll, I'll speak for Him. I will do all things for Him. But to die is what? <laughs> to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me because I will do good things while I'm here for Jesus. Yet, what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is by far what? So much better. But it is necessary for you that I remain in the body. But you may ask, Pastor, you have a good life. You have a great family. I mean, why, why, why would you ever want to go and be with your Lord in heaven? Because... I, I understand what it means for this, this life to be temporary. For the reality is that I should not be here right now. Many of you know that I walked through a season of having cancer. I had pancreatic cancer which moved from my liver, and I had part of my pancreas removed, my, my liver, my spleen, and my gallbladder are all out of my body right now. And so, um, but that, that wasn't actually the hard part. If you, this was me three years ago. Uh, slightly different looking, amen? All right. Um, and so this is me in my better days in the hospital. And I just want to read to you part of my story that many of you don't know. My recovery was going well, and this was back in 2000, from beginning of 2016, until January when my back pain was just getting worse. And I started having fevers and night sweats. They found out through a scan that fluid had been flowing out where my pancreas was. So they, they took that fluid out and the fevers went down. But the, the sweats and night, um, the pain and night sweats came back in February and they discovered that the fluid collection where my pancreas was had not only increased, but there was a second collection, which became infected. So on the 15th, they put a drain, which removed the pain, but they actually punctured my lining of my lung. So that night, after the procedure, they found me with fever and chills. And the oxygen level was 60%. I barely could breathe for the next 12 hours. After a couple days of the ICU, my body normalized, and I thought I was in a better place until February 21st. When back at home with the drain in me, the home health nurse chose to flush the drain back into my pancreas and caused complete mayhem on my body. That afternoon, I was in so much so pain that I was both screaming and convulsing, and it took over eight hours to manage my pain. 
as they're being transferred to Norfolk General, they started doing studies on my body. Got me in a better place where they found out as a response to what happened previously. My left lung had been flowing with fluids, and my lungs weren't functioning properly. But when they tried to drain the fluid, they found out the fluid had turned into gel. And so, about seven or days into the, my time in the hospital, they decided to do a surgery called BAT, where they actually scrape the inside of the lungs, so then flush it all out. After that was successful, I found myself having two chest tubes placed in my body. At day 10, they started taking out all the drains, and it was a big day because every day they take out one more tube from my body. And I was released March 9th. There's no reason I should be here. The only reason I'm here is because God wants me here. For, for to me to live is Christ, right? If you took me home, that'd be awesome. Sorry. This, this is our anthem, right? Christ in all things. I'm told to stay safe, right? <laughs> Heaven is our home. And, and one thing I want us to understand is that when we talk about heaven, we talk about the place of heaven, right? We talk about how good it will, it will, it will go because of the mansions and the streets, because of made of gold. But I more and more understand that heaven is not about the location. It's about being in the presence of Jesus. That's what it's all about. Because when we get to heaven, we're not going to care about anything else except that we are at the throne of our Lord. We're going to be praising Him every, every single time we can. Uh, this, is, this is Michael Carr. All right, now I'm going to get on to things other than myself. This is Michael Carr. About 20 years ago, he wrote a song, uh, an album called Unveil of Hope, which is a, uh, uh, an album based on um, the book of Revelation. And uh, um, one, of the, one of the songs is called The New Jerusalem, which is based off of Revelation 22, where it speaks of our, our, our true hope. So I actually want to close the message with playing the song and just really understanding about the hope of heaven. So if you could uh, Rick, start with the song.